Hello everyone, and welcome to part 7 in the series on modeling and texture painting in Blender. In part 6 we worked on the wood texture, and now we're going to move on to the metal. Uh, but we're just going to work on this bluish uh, steel metal, we're not going to do the bronze yet. Even though they're very similar uh, in, in the way that we're going to paint them, we're just going to do one at a time. Okay, so I'm going to use the face selection masking and then the C key, which will select all of the faces that I, I want to paint on. So pretty much anything that is this bluish color. Okay, and so the first thing that I want to do is maybe desaturate this color a little bit. So if I if I take my color to white and I set the blend type to saturation, uh, now if I paint over these areas really lightly, I can just take a little bit of that blue away. I think initially I just made it too blue because I liked the aesthetics of it, uh, but it's actually pretty hard to do a, like a base uh, metal with uh, with that much blue. So I'll take my strength up to at a 0.5 and again just lightly paint over this. I, I do want to keep that blue as the base color but it's just going to be a little lighter. Uh, so I'll just I'll go over all of these areas and just make it a little more gray. And really the only time I ever use the blend type of saturation is for this purpose alone. If I want to keep a base color but either lighten it or or you know maybe make it a little more pronounced, make it darker, then I'll use the uh, the saturation blend type to just add more color or or fade it a little. And when I say darker, I don't mean the value of the color, I mean the actual color itself to to introduce more or take some of the color away. Uh, but not not necessarily the value. But I'm just going to expand my UV image editor a little bit because we're going to be painting in here. And I'm going to switch my brush to the smear brush. I'm going to blend this in a little. This is when we initially blocked out those colors uh, and the of uh, the lighting and the shadows. Just want to make this transition a little more smooth. Okay, and I'll switch back to my draw brush. And I'll make the brush size very small with the F key. And the strength I'm going to take up pretty high, maybe a 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And then I'm going to add these edge scratches in. Uh, let's switch the blend type to overlay. And now I'm just going to draw this very jagged line across to this edge. And it's it's kind of really hard to do this randomly without it looking like a, like a uh, you know like like a like the heart machine monitor that you you're hooked up to when you're you know in surgery or something. <laughs> uh, so you know try to make it as random looking as you can and and not have a pattern repeat. I think at least for me, my hand wants to repeat this rhythm or pattern, so uh, it's kind of hard to avoid doing that. But this is just the initial line. We'll, we'll probably go back over this and add more later, but we just want to sort of add some base scratches along these edges. And we can make these little circular or eye-shaped scratches, which kind of implies that maybe like a little chunk has been taken out of the the uh, the edge there. And even though I'm painting in the UV image editor, I, I'm watching this in the in the viewport just to make sure that it, it's big enough or that it looks you know detailed enough or whatever. Uh, but I like to sort of keep an eye on both.
Okay, so the spikes should be pretty easy. So I'll just draw these scratches down the edge, maybe make my brush a little bigger. And that way I can sort of hit both sides of, of these two spikes as I just draw down the middle. And the same here, just get both of these sides at once. Okay, and now, so I'll uh, take my brush down a little bit, again with the F key, and just scratch down the middle of each one of these spikes. And if you're doing this with a mouse, the only real recommendation I have is just to go very slow. You know, the, the, the uh, the advantage of doing this with a, a tablet and a pen is that you can let your wrist do that jagged motion and you can move the pen as quickly as you want. Um, whereas the mouse, you don't, it's difficult to have that same kind of control. So I would just recommend going very slow. And I'm just putting the smaller jagged edge around the, uh, the edges there too. But I think the spikes look good, and we can move on to this top part. I'm just going to start here along this edge. And I'll make some more of these little eye shapes occasionally, just to imply little nicks or uh, you know chips taken out of the blade. And again, I'm trying to keep this line as random as possible. So if I feel my hand doing the same pattern over, I'll just, I'll stop and I'll, I'll just continue again because I find sometimes that sort of helps to correct that, uh, that desire of keeping a rhythm with that line. And again, these are just initial lines that we're doing, so we'll probably come back over these and uh, give them a little more detail. But uh, I find just, just putting the initial lines down first kind of helps. I'm just going to go back over this and put a few longer uh, edge scratches in there. And I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm sure you can understand why most uh, videos on YouTube are are speed painting videos because this is probably pretty boring to watch uh, this little you know detail work. It's also a bit of a challenge to to paint while you're talking about painting, uh, which I, I can't really explain why. It's just, it's just. Um, I guess I'm not used to to discussing what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Uh, I, I kind of go into a zone and listen to music or, or you know, listen to some kind of background noise while I'm painting, typically. All right, now, just like we did before with the handle and the wood, uh, we're going to create some uh, some shadows and light on the metal to make it look like it's, you know, rounder and uh, catching reflections and so on. So I'll just open up my viewport a little more. And I'll type T to bring up my, my toolbar here. 
and I'll use the F key to raise the size of my brush and then I can use the X key to switch back and forth between these two colors of, of black and white. So I'm going to uh, lower my brush strength to about a 0.25 and I'm just going to start brushing some of this black in along the corners. And rem remember we're using the blend type overlay. Okay, so we're just darken up those edges. Also, uh, remember to do the you know occlusion shadows here on the top and the bottom. Okay, we'll do the same thing on this part. It's looking pretty good. And now here again, I'm just going to paint a little bit of a, of a hint of shadow on the darker side of this spike. And since this one's on the bottom, we'll just add a little shadow all over. And then this one will just darken the darker side a little. And up here on this part, uh, so let's see, we can start by adding this big occlusion shadow in here where it meets that brass piece. And then along the bottom. And we'll kind of shadow this whole back side a little bit. And maybe I shouldn't use the term shadow. It's not what I'm doing is not really adding shadows. It's more uh, this piece is supposed to be very reflective towards the middle. Uh, so we're just kind of we are darkening the areas that are meant to be darker that are, are getting less light, like the inside of these uh, these little cutouts. Uh, we're mostly just trying to brighten up the center part. And we can do that further by adding the white. So we'll just hit X to switch to that white color. And we're still on overlay. And I'll just brush this little line down the middle. And we'll do the same thing here. That's starting to give it more of a, of a metal look. And on these spikes, we'll just brighten up the uh, the brighter side a little. Not not the whole thing. I'm just kind of adding some random value into into that color. And so here, I'll brighten up the top where it would be getting that direct light. Okay, so the next step is to add a little bit of uh, value difference in the middle. And the reason that we're doing that is, first I'll, I'll type X to switch back to black. And I'm just dabbing a little bit of this dark in all over the surface of the metal, uh, because this implies a little bit of uh, variation in the surface, uh, the surface height. So the little, little dents that don't really catch too much light, but are noticeable in how they uh, bend the reflections a little. So just really subtle, uh, subtle differences in value are good for when painting metal. So as you can see, it's just barely dabbing in some dark spots around. The surface is really big, so I'll increase the size of the brush with the F key. And again, just randomly dab some of that, that dark color in. 
And so now the next thing we need to do is paint in some of the reflections. And we're just going to be putting little hints of the reflection in. So here on the bottom, I'm going to use the S key to select this, uh, this red cloth color. And with a very low brush size, I'm just going to, to put a little bit of that red into the metal. Maybe take a little bit of this brighter color towards the middle. And so this will look like it's just reflecting some of that uh, the cloth image in the metal. And up here I'll select the color of the wood and dab a little bit of that in and maybe even a little hint of this green. We'll do the same thing down here. Select the dark wood color first and sort of put it down as a base and then select the lighter color and put a few spots of that around and then even a hint of this green here where there is a lot of it below. And here I'll make it look like it's reflecting the wood and then on each side I'll put a little bit of that red color from the cloth. Down here on the spikes we'll just use the S key to select this uh, base bronze color. And just add a little hint of it in here around where the uh, where the spike meets that ring. It doesn't have to be terribly noticeable. the The good thing about reflections is they're supposed to be really subtle, and uh, but it will make all the difference. It really it really makes that metal look uh, not believable, but but in the cartoon sense, it makes it look convincing. And while we still need to work on the top of the axe, the blade part, uh, I would say that these rings and spikes are probably finished. The only other thing that you could do if you wanted is create a little bit of um, detail by adding some scratches and nicks in, in the surface. Uh, and to do that, we would just select a really dark gray color, not completely black, but just a dark gray, and lower our brush size with the F key. And I could just scratch this little uh, line on the surface and then use the X key to switch back to white and I can just paint a little highlight underneath of it. I don't think I'm going to be doing much of this detail work. Um, I think that's, you know, it's very time consuming and I feel like that's just getting a little too much into like advanced painting and I really want to keep this pretty simple. Uh, but maybe, you know, you could add a little chip by just creating a small darker patch and then painting a, a, uh, a light line underneath of it so that it's catching a little bit of reflection. Uh, really that's up to you, but again, like that, that's just going to make this video or all of these videos a lot longer. So, um, but I, I did want to at least demonstrate how, how you do it. And whichever direction you, you put these little scratches in, just make sure that you're putting a highlight on the bottom. Uh, but basically that's it. Uh, we probably won't do too many more of these. Along these spikes, it's really easy to do these uh, to, to create the illusion of more geometry by just switching to the smear brush. And we're going to actually just drag a tiny bit of that, that black into it along with the white edge scratches. Uh, because it's going to make it look like there's little chips taken out. Um, I'm just being really, really, really subtle with the brush. And I think you can overdo it by putting too many in, so I'm just going to do maybe a one or two on each side. And I'm trying not to drag the black in too far, otherwise it becomes pretty obvious that uh, it's painted on and not an actual little uh, chip in the, in the blade. But that's it for part 7, and I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.